Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again. My name is Jack, and this is Alternative Me, the show where we talk about the best and the greatest in 90s alternative rock, the music that influenced my life and the music that continues to influence me as I write songs and record songs for my new record that is coming out later this year. The band I would like to talk about on this episode is Washington, D.C.'s Unrest. Uh, This is a band that is terribly, terribly overlooked. Uh, Not a lot of people even really, I don't think, maybe even know about this band. Um, In the uh, the early 90s, um, they were extremely influential. And they had uh, a, a pretty loyal following. They were pioneers in a lot of ways in the indie rock world. Um, for their record label as well. A um, little bit of background on them. Uh, basically, uh, the core of the band was Mark Robinson, who was the singer, uh, main songwriter and guitarist, and uh, Bridget Cross, who was the bass player. Uh, and they had a drummer named uh, Phil Krauth as well. And um, Mark Robinson, along with being the singer-songwriter for Unrest, also was the head of his own record label, which he called Teen Beat. Along with the other big indies that I talk about on this channel, um, like Sub Pop, Discord, K Records, Matador, you know, Teen Beat is up there. They may not have had the big catalog that those other record labels have or the, the giant roster of artists, but they were just as influential and just as well known. Another and then another one called Simple Machines out of Washington D.C. Washington D.C. was a hotbed for independent music, and uh, Mark Robinson and his band Unrest were kind of the flagship of Teen Beat Records. And uh, I discovered this band in uh, around 1992. I had picked up a sub pop compilation CD called Afternoon Delight, and they had a song on there that was a sub pop seven inch of theirs called uh, Look Who's Coming On Down. And when I heard this, it sounded different from just about anything I'd ever heard. Uh, It was just shamelessly poppy, like shamelessly catchy, just with the bop, bop, bahs and the dot, dot, dahs and the la, la, las. Like it was just, um, you know, really clean guitars and um, really jangly. Um, it It was a sharp contrast to the other things that were coming out of Seattle at that time, um, like the grunge music, for instance, you know, unrest was such a big difference. Um, so it, it stood out, you know, like, like a, like a sore thumb and, um, but they were, uh, not a sore thumb at all. They, it was a, it was a breath of fresh air actually. And they spearheaded a movement of, of pop, uh, in indie rock like that. And, um, then uh, I guess the first album I heard of theirs was called Imperial FFRR, and this was released on their own label, Teen Beat, out of Washington, D.C. Um, this is around this time that I started going to see live shows, and I got to see them live. And they, you know, they were one of those bands that was – they were just as good live as they were on CD. Uh, they, they, their sound was minimalist, but it was full and rich enough to be, you know – to be rocking, you know, to get you moving. Um, They were all good musicians. Uh, Phil Kraut, the drummer, had a solo project, and also uh, Mark Robinson and Jenny Toomey of the band Tsunami, also from Washington, D.C., formed a band called Grenadine, which was kind of like an old-school, like, 60s jazz uh, type of thing, but... um, it's kind of hard to explain, but I would definitely recommend uh, checking out Grenadine. That was a really good record as well. They put out a lot of bands on Teen Beat uh, that went on to become pretty big. I mean, uh, one of them was called Versus. They were from New York City, and Versus was kind of like Unrest, but only with a little bit more dynamics. Like they were a little more distortion and loud, loud soft, uh, a little more, um, I guess you would call it a little more like serious, I guess. Uh, but... Um, also, this band Eggs, who was kind of in the opposite direction. Eggs was a little bit more quirky. Um, a band called Plus Minus, a band called Flin Flon, uh, and then another band called the Gamma Rays, who put out this seven inch that I just really, really loved. It's called It's called Lovely, and if you've got a chance to check out that, I really highly, highly recommend that as well. Um, 
So a lot of good stuff. Uh, then the the second Unrest album I heard was called Perfect Teeth, and that was also that was released on Teen Beat, but it was also released on 4AD, the legendary British record label that put out all that great shoegaze music from the from the early 90s as well. Um, you know, like the Pale Saints and Lush, and um, you know all you know, you know, all that stuff, the Pixies. So. Um, Pixies, of course, aren't British, <laughs> but, you know, it's a legendary record label. You know, uh, This Mortal Coil, all, all kinds of stuff came out of 4AD. 4AD is another story, but let's just stick with uh, Unrest and Teen Beat right now. Um, there's the, that second record, Perfect Teeth, um, was uh, got a, got a lot of press, you know, and, and because it was on that big label, and also that was when they toured. All, they they played Lollapalooza, and they had a video that was on MTV. It was on 120 minutes, um, you know, maybe a couple times, but enough to see it. And um, and then you know what? That was kind of it for unrest, um, because then they kind of broke up. They went their the the drummer went off to do his solo thing, and then uh, Bridget and and uh, Mark formed another band called Air Miami, and they released a couple seven inches and a record, and they were really good. Um, they weren't that different from Unrest. Maybe they were a little bit more fleshed out um, musically, m- maybe a little um, less, I don't know, I guess how would you would say, maybe they were a little bit more poppy. I don't, I, it's, hard, it's hard to really say, but in my opinion, Air Miami could have been an Unrest album, and I wouldn't have been, you know, I would have, accepted that I think everybody would have but I think they probably just wanted a a change they probably wanted to do something a little different um if you get a chance to hear the single airplane rider by the band air miami it's really really good also oh another great (laughs) band that was on teen beat was called romania if you get a chance please listen to the song planes by romania because it is sort of like early new wave duran duran and uh, that might not sound that weird right now, but in the early 90s, it was quite amazing. Um, and it's just this really, it's really, it, you'd swear it was from the early 80s, but it's not. And um, yeah, I would check out Romania, the song Planes, Air Miami, Airplane Ride, a lot of planes, Air Miami planes, like, okay, whatever. Um <laughs> Um, and then there was a band called Jets to Brazil, and then Burning Airlines was Jawbox's second. So, you know, you, it was a lot of airplane-themed uh, stuff going on. Not really sure why. If I were to rec- go ahead and recommend what you would hear, I mean, I mean, uh, they, they released a ton of 7-inches, which are probably really hard to find at this point. So I would just say, you know, Imperial FFRR, their first album, and Perfect Teeth, their second album, is really like that's kind of all you need really to, to get the unrest experience. But I would also check out Air Miami because the, they had some good tunes. It was pretty poppy stuff. Um, right up my alley, that's for sure. Unrest just sort of continued that tradition of really, really great indie bands coming out of that Washington, D.C. area. I mean, there was Unrest, there was Tsunami, there was Velocity Girl, there was Jawbox, Shudder to Think. Um, I mean, when you think of D.C., you think of Fugazi and you think of Discord and, you you know, all that, all that stuff. So... Unrest just sort of continued that tradition, but just in a different direction. They weren't they weren't hardcore or, or or angry or loud. They were they were really really catchy poppy music. The main influence I think uh, on Unrest is a band called The Wedding Present, who are from England. Um, the Wedding Present is a band that I didn't really know much about until I heard Unrest and found out that that's who they were influenced by, influenced by. Um, the wedding present was was just really like the definition of the word jangly, jangly pop. Um, you know, did clean guitars. Um, they had a record called Sea Monsters that was produced by Steve Albini, who we've talked about here, produced PJ Harvey and Nirvana and the Pixies. And uh, it's a really great record. And uh, 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 the, the wedding present's another band that's pretty extremely influential but very overlooked they're as influential as the pixies easily so um if you're going to check out unrest i would definitely say probably check out the wedding present as well i wasn't like a biggest fan of theirs i had a lot of friends who loved them but i never really got into them not because they weren't good but just because you know i I had a lot a lot on my plate but i did see the wedding present um when i lived in seattle and they were really good they were they were a very good band Anyway, um, so I guess that about wraps it up, man. I mean, I would definitely check out uh, the band Unrest, uh, the Imperial FFRR. 
the album Perfect Teeth, Air Miami. And I'm going to close out this episode of Alternative Me with another ukulele cover. And this is the song Makeout Club from their album Perfect Teeth. You were the first one first one first one